Thank you, Paul and Dave Besson. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's been dubbed the season of sleaze and scandal. What a tonic it would be for the English game if these two famous clubs could serve up a cup final to savour at the end of this traumatic campaign. The ingredients are certainly there. Both sides boasting a host of internationals. And, of course, in terms of pedigree, well, there's so much expertise. 25 FA Cup finals between them. Manchester United having reached this stage for a record 13th time at Everton, making their fifth appearance in the final in 12 years. So then to the pre-match presentation, so much a part of the Wembley scene. The team is being introduced today to the guests of honour, their Royal Highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Kent. 80,000 capacity crowd paying over two and a half million pounds in receipts basking in the Wembley atmosphere. It's the richest football match ever staged in England. But old rivalry is renewed, of course, but memories revived of a decade ago on that wonderful strike by Norman Whiteside delivered the cup to Old Trafford at Everton's expense. by their captain Dave Watson Everton under Joe Royal's guiding hand have played with so much pride and passion and resilience over the past few months not only to reach the final but also to stave off the threat of relegation that lingered right on until the last couple of weeks of the season but there's Joe Royal the man who has provided the catalyst for this revival by Everton the Manchester United bidding to become only the 14th this century to retain the trophy it's a golden chance today to erase the disappointment of last Sunday when they were so narrowly picked for the league title. They'll be favourites with many neutrals this afternoon. Young Nicky Butt getting his chance in the starting lineup with Giggs left on the bench. Ryan McClare, Paul Ince, young Paul Scholes. He'll be a substitute this afternoon. And there is Ryan Giggs, who of course has been battling his way back from a hamstring injury. Alex Ferguson looking relaxed, a beaming smile from him. And there is the referee this afternoon, Gerald Ashby from Worcester. And his two linesmen, Stephen Bennett and Mark Warren. Reserve official Stephen Lodge. So, Ray Clements, the scene you've taken part in yourself many a time. What do you think is now going through the minds of these players? Well, I was just looking there in the, in the uh, formalities there, and you look at young Nicky Butt, he looks quite tense there. I think the last thing that uh, he wants is to be stood there for too much longer. He wants to get out and get kicking a ball around and get the tension out of him. Also, young Gary Neville, massive game for him in what is really his first full season. So, a couple of the youngsters there are looking nervous, and it is a—it's the worst time now. Just stood around waiting. All—all all 22 players want to do is break away from that line and get kicking a ball around. Well, there's a famous old face, Bobby Charlton. Hoping his team can go on to yet another triumph this season. It certainly appeared unthinkable a few weeks ago. The Manchester United might end the season without a trophy of some kind. They've won at least one, of course, in the last five campaigns. So, confirmation of the lineups, starting with Everton. Joe Royal had the task of choosing from a squad of 17 fit players, and this is the 11 that he's plumped for. The most intriguing, of course, is omission of Duncan Ferguson. Although he has only just come back from a double hernia operation, he was expected to play, but instead, Royal's choice up front is the semi final pairing of Graham Stewart. And Paul Rideout in midfield. He's again preferred Joe Parkinson to John Eberle. So let's look at the formation then, Ray, and how you think they're going to shape up. Well, it's, it's a very straightforward back four. Andy Hinchcliffe on the left-hand side will try and get down that left-hand side as much as he possibly can. And they'll get the ball forward from back to front to Rideout as quickly as they possibly can with Stewart and Limpar 
supporting as, as, as quickly as they possibly can. It's a positive uh, set out, and it's one that uh, saw them very, very well in the semi final against Spurs. Well, there was really only one dilemma facing Alex Ferguson whether or not to include Ryan Giggs after his dramatic recovery from injury. He's decided not to, leaving him on the bench. So Nicky Buck keeps his place along with Brian McClear. They were the two players most at risk by Giggs's return. The rest of the side is as expected with 20-year-old Gary Neville at right back after being reprieved when the FA elected not to suspend him for collecting too many bookings. Ray, look at their formation. Well, it's a tried and trusted back four this year, isn't it? And uh, what does surprise me there? I just wonder if Hughes will play up the front on his own and Nicky Butt and Brian McClare will break from the middle of the field. And it will also to be interesting to see whether Keane actually stays on that right-hand side or whether he moves inside a little bit and Nicky Butt goes and plays out on that right-hand side. But I have a feeling that Butt will drop deeper and Hughes will be the lone striker with support from the middle of the field. There have been speculation that Ryan Giggs might start. Do you feel that's the right decision to, to leave him in reserve? Well, the hamstring injury is, uh, you know, a bad injury. He's had um, a number of weeks out, and any sort of weakness in a muscle injury, it'll get found out on this Wembley turf. That's a certainty. So I think that Alex Ferguson has obviously done a sensible thing in terms of putting him on the bench. If they need him, he's always likely to come on and, and supply a little bit of magic. But uh, I think it's the right decision from Alex. We just saw there the Everton bench, Duncan Ferguson again. I think the general feeling was that he would have started the game, but Joe Royal has decided not to. To leave him among the substitutes as well. As ever, it's an occasion to savour the 114th FA Cup final. Wembley awash with colour and alive with expectancy. A final that didn't really seem likely a few months ago with Everton in such dire straits. And as Gerald Ashby prepares to set the game underway, a beaming referee too, clearly relishing the occasion himself. Well, I think... No one's surprised that uh, Everton come here in confident mood. Joe Royal has created such a transformation and now seeks its silverware to complete it. Flair and aggression are two qualities both teams possess. A physical contest, some feel, may well ensue with such competitive players as Ince and Keane, Horn and Parkinson. But hopefully, Wembley's wide open spaces will allow the skill factor to flourish as well. Everton then to kick off in their famous blue shirts, white shorts, Manchester United, of course, in red and white. Paul, it's such a driving force in midfield for United. I'm sure he is going to be a key man this afternoon. Stewart lining up with Rideout then for the kickoff. Maybe Rideout will be the one outright striker. But certainly Stewart will be getting forward, and also the likes of Horn and Lippard down the flank. And Hinchcliffe. Well, he's going to be another very important player. His ability to provide such accurate crosses with that favoured left foot of his. Does a very well, X-ray, uh, Alex Ferguson. Yes, it does. And it's interesting now as they're waiting to kick off that Nicky Butt is lining up on the right-hand side of midfield. So it would appear that... Uh, Although there's a lot of speculation that Roy Keane would play down that side, it appears that Nicky Butt's going to do that, and Roy Keane will play, and he's more familiar, and certainly a role that he relishes in, breaking from the middle of the field. Two managers, of course, great friends off the field. Their friendship goes back over a decade now. Ken Bates, chairman of Chelsea, among the celebrities, the dignitaries, looking on this afternoon this great day in the English football calendar. Almost ready then for the off. Emerton to attack the goal to our right in the first half. There's Eric Cantona. Such relief at Old Trafford at the news that he was to stay on, but of course out of English, indeed world football, because of his lengthy ban after his misdemeanors in the match at Crystal Palace earlier in the season. Long wait won't help the nerves, will it, Ray? It certainly won't, but it looks as though the time has come now, but uh, obviously it's all to do with the media, I think. <laughs> Where's a blame? This is Gary Ablett. Up towards right out. Well, I'm sure we'll be aware throughout of the presence of Ferguson on the bench. If things aren't going too well, well, Joe Rawl has that trump card to play. 
on by Bruce to Mark Hughes. Now Ince. Options ahead of him with Roy Keane. There, the first intervention, interception of the game by Barry Horn, a terrier like figure in the midfield for Everton. Alongside Joe Parkinson. Two very combative and aggressive players. Neville Southall playing today his 650th match in goal for Everton. Away by Pallister. Here's Dave Watson, captain of Everton. Now Horn. Hustled up in the stride though by McClare. Off goes Keane. Hughes ahead of him. Might have gone out wide. Hughes has found him now. This is Buck. And it goes Hughes and Sharp. He arrived with such stealth and Lee Sharp at the far post. Nicky Butt involved in the build-up. It was a good cross here from Nicky Button. You can see Lee Sharp arriving at the back over the top of Matt Jackson, and he just couldn't direct the header down, but it all came from a, a slip by Barry Horn in the middle of the field. Nicky Butt, one of Fergie's fledglings as they're known. Mark Hughes, who holds the play up so well, playing in his fifth FA Cup final. Here's Hughes now. Manoeuvre though by Hawke, and then by Parkinson to Lippar. Probably the best passer of the ball on either side today, Lippar, but you never know quite what to expect from him. Certainly unpredictable. Here's Lippar now. His first Wembley final. Looking to thread his way through, Lippar with a shot, and just beaten away at the last end by Peter Schmeichel. Got down really well then to make the save, and there we saw the devilry of Anders Lippar. Well, he had a little bit of luck to actually get to that position, but he struck it so hard that Schmeichel could do nothing else but just touch it round the post. Now, Hitchcliffe with the corner. Curled over invitingly, and Schmeichel just got his fit to it first. It really is such a key part of Everton's armoury now, these corners flighted over by Andy Hitchcliffe. Limpar, beaten though by McClare. This is Horn. Right out in the middle, but Pallister is there. He had the task of policing him this afternoon. I don't know whether he'll be relieved that Ferguson isn't starting, but he will certainly have his work cut out too, Pallister, in containing Paul Ryder, who's been in excellent form over the past few weeks. Schmeichel, an important save from him early on. Here's Ince. Good anticipation, though, by Watson. And young Gary Neville. Just 20 years old, Neville. And there had been a doubt about him being available for this final, as I was mentioning earlier. The threat of suspension was hanging over him. But he only received a fine. Not by Watson, but only as far as Roy Keane. Who will certainly relish the battle at midfield, Keane. The man who was involved in that fracas at the semi-final. But he was set off for stamping on Gareth Southgate. And his punishment is still to be settled. He's only had a three-match ban, but he faces a further disrepute charge later this week. Pallister's header. He's only reached Watson, though, to puff it back forward again. Now Dennis Irwin. Mr. Reliable, as he's known. Doesn't have too many bad games, this fella. Limpar. Too long, though, for Stewart in the middle. Easily plucked out of the air by Peter Schmeichel. It has been a positive start by Everton, hasn't it? They've been the sharpest into the tackle. They're the ones that's got into the Man United half more. And uh, certainly, I think Joe Royal is very happy with the way that his, that his side has started here. Huntsworth chasing back. Comfortably gathered, though, by Neville Southall. His fifth final. A seven he's beat to the club down the years. David Huntsworth, England under 21 international become a force in the evidence side this season. They've been very strong defensively. And they had 
conceded just one goal in reaching this FA Cup final. That to Tottenham in the semi-final. Unsworth. Steve Bruce. Throw taken by Gary Neville. On by McClare. Everton's 11th final in the FA Cup. They've had the four wins. The runners up on seven occasions, and that is a record. On the Joe Royal. Hopes they will be ending today. By Neville, little flipping was from Butt. This is McClare. Well attentive though, Hitchcliffe able to get back. And Stewart almost releasing right out then. It's for Keane. Now Neville. Bet he hadn't been dreamed about playing in a FA Cup final earlier in the season. Gary Neville. But he has been playing so well. Really they haven't missed Paul Parker, an England international, of course, has been out with long-term injury. Bruce. Now it's closed out by Parkinson. And Ashby has given the free kick. I'll say from here to Marsh. They are so sharp in the tackle, Everton, though. You have to move the ball around so quickly against them, otherwise they're right in there, harrying, forcing you to make mistakes, and that's what they've done to Man United so far. Whenever they've had reasonable possession of the ball, Man United, Everton have been like tigers round their feet, and eventually United have given it away, and that's why they can't get any moves together and can't get any threat to Neville Southall's goal at the moment. Yes, I think it's that extra commitment that Joe Royal has instilled in the side since he came back in November. Right out, trying to spread the play wide, but Neville was there. And away for an Everton throw. Hitchcliffe will take it. Aiming towards right out. Irwin. Wits. United cool under pressure. Good work then by Unsworth. What I must say is, for my money, one of the outstanding young defenders in the English game. Jackson between them. Trying to get Everton flowing here. Jackson clearing strongly into the tackle. Play on, says the referee. And it's Ablett. Not though picking out Paul Rideout. Alex Ferguson, so disappointed, of course, last weekend when his team failed to retain the championship. Hughes and Watson together. Neville. Now Nicky Butt. Bounded by Ablett. It's kept going well too, but one of United's many fine young prospects. Away by Hitchcliffe. Keen working hard though to recover possession for United. Dennis Irwin. Sharp starting his first FA Cup final. It's not a back cross in either. With Buck looking at the far post, Hughes in the middle. Away for the corner. Lee Sharp, who supplied that cross, will take the kick. Pallister has come up for the back. Bruce as well. Always a menace on the set pieces. Palace has gone to the near post. As it's oh. neither he nor Bruce really had a clean side of that one in the end. The two going for the same cross. I think the problem, though, no uh, problem there for Neville Southall. Now, a very easy save there, just casually one-handed there. He's been doing that for goodness knows how long. And will continue to play because he's about 47, if that's all he's tested with. He certainly says at least 40, Neville Southall. Made at the Everton side the last time they won the FA Cup, back in 1984 when they beat Watford, but he's been on the losing side since.
Irwin. Defunded by Limpar. So here's a chance set for United, maybe for Ince to strike one. Irwin, of course, who's underlined so often this season, is shooting from long range. Four goals in the FA Cup from Irwin in this campaign. He's the top scorer in the competition for United. Ince is there too. Dennis Irwin straight into the wall. Irwin again down for Keane and McClare. A clever piece of thinking. Just wanted Southall, maybe a yard or two off his line. And Hartlesley over the bar in the end. Yes, it was a clever piece of thinking there because you can see him look up there quickly, see where Southall is, and just that delicate little chip. But Southall always in control of the situation, even if that had been on target, he'd have made a save there. But that's typical Brian McClare, he is a thinking player, he's the, the Man United players calling the most intelligent player they've got in the club, so you can see his brains working there. Well, he has been something of a revelation this season, McClare, having been only on the fringe of the team in recent campaigns. Seems to be now very much a first choice. Watson's header, powerfully forward, dealt with though by Pallister. There's Hughes, not turned down to McClare, Keane. Goes Nicky Butt. Leclerc. I worry there's some Tigerish tackling in that midfield. Hughes skipping past the tackle. Watson then able to clear. These terrier like Everton players in the midfield area are known as the Dogs of War. The label given them by Joe Royal, which he may regret. And they certainly have a very combative attitude. As of course to the likes of Keane and Ince for United. Graham Stewart, who was wondering all week if he was going to be in the starting lineup, he was imploring manager Joe Raw to let him know one way or the other a couple of days ago. Limpar off Stewart then for the throw to United. Sharp. It goes Bruce. Now Butt. Away from one end of the field to the other, Brock Peter Schmeichel. So consistent again for Manchester United this season. Pallister, up for Hughes, it's a foul by Watson who clapped it to the back of him. I think it's going to be quite a battle between those two. Yes, here we see it there, Watson can only see the ball, it's actually his elbow I think that goes into the back of, of Hughes' head, not actually Watson's head. Steve Bruce, on for butt, turned really sharply there, still butt. by Jackson, but only as far as it didn't really get hold of it, but of course for shot, and the same applied to him, and that will go down as a squandered opportunity. It certainly will, but they were a little bit fortunate to get it, because Ince obviously tried the shot, and then there was a lucky deflection, here we see the shot, see the deflection, and there it just bounces so invitingly for Lee Sharp, on his favourite left foot, but completely kicks across it and takes the pace out of it and makes it a simple save for Neville. So determined to excel in this FA Cup final, Lee Sharp, having only been a substitute in the last one, he also missed out in 1990 on his way back from injury. He's come a long way since then, he has become a vital player in the United centre.
not his free kick. Their third FA Cup final in five years. Having beaten Crystal Palace and Chelsea in the last two. Hooked away by Horn. Now Neville. Sharp, she'll hit it well too, despite the efforts of Matt Jackson, it goes in. Out by Jackson, the horn, goes down quickly by Hughes, no foul. The two number tens at Coffey, there's Watson then to the rescue, as Dennis Owen came marauding forward. Mark Hughes, who ironically of course almost joined Everton earlier in the season. But for injury, may well have done. And here he is now playing against them and leading this United front line. As of course he has done so impressively down the years. Just about the last man you'd want to face, Ray, I think, for your defender, Mark Hughes. Well, he never gives you a minute's peace, and, and the United fans love him because of the effort that he puts in. You know, we just heard them out lifted. The Sharps cross in, Buck was in the middle, and eventually away by Parkinson. Sorry, I was just saying there, that just how it lifted all the United fans, just because Mark Hughes got in a couple of tackles, knocked a couple of Everton players over, all of a sudden the crowd and the team are lifted, and now they're, they're pinning Everton back. I remember, in the match against Leeds in an earlier round when he scored a goal, he said it was the most emotional of his career. He came just after he'd agreed to stay on again. He's so much to him to be a United player. Well, they have a free kick now. Jackson had a little dispute there with Lip Park. Irwin will take the kick. They posted Pallister forward at Bruce as well. Southall came forward and she's got his fist to it. Four clearance though by Hitchcliffe. Straight to Keane. How can he get his cross in from here? Drilled it low, but. Watson in the way. Bruce, short body was fouled. No sympathy though from referee Ashby. Which, as the Gears will tell you, hasn't gone down too well with the Evertonians here. Well, there's one or two tackles that have gone in from both sides, which uh, have been from behind, and of course, with the new interpretations, that's supposed to be a free kick. And Gerald Ashby, in trying to let the game flow, has let one or two things go, which the crowd are getting incensed by. Ablett. Now Hitchcliffe. Keen it just ahead of Graham Stewart. It's with Butt. Did really well then, Nicky Butt. So did Hall. That was a fair tackle, nothing wrong with that. Anyway, right. No, that was certainly a fair tackle. Young Nicky, Nicky Butt, although he looked very nervous when he was stood there meeting uh, the Prince of Wales, he started very, very positively. Certainly exuding confidence at the moment. McClare. Can't find Keane, though. Ablett. Cooley off for Stewart. And then for United throw. United, who won the cup on eight occasions, four times runners up. Dave Watson. And up by Pallister. Irwin. United just beginning to threaten to take control now. This is Sharp. Late tackle by Parkinson. United's free kick. And that will be the signal for Bruce to go up and Pallister too. have left just Stewart upfield sharp with a free kick curled over invitingly and it was Hinchcliffe who got it away and only as far as Nicky Butt now it's good spell this for United Keane to drive it back across again but there's Ablett and Everton playing themselves out of trouble but on the back foot for the moment started very promisingly but it's United taking command 
Yes, yeah, certainly Everton started well, but now United getting in charge of it, and Everton have got a problem with their long ball game. They've been forced to defend, and when they hit it forward, Stewart or Rideout is totally isolated, and they can't get anybody to hold the ball up for them to get support to the front man. Rideout with Lippar, who was certainly prominent in those early stages. They kept fairly subdued since. Again, some excellent play by Nicky Butt. But overhitting his pass in search of Mark Hughes. Nicky Bart, who played in all of United's games in Europe this season. In the starting lineup today with Giggs on the bench. Now, a problem here for Steve Bruce, who pulled up very sharply. Doesn't look too good, that. That certainly looks as though he's got a hamstring problem yeah. there, and if it is a hamstring problem, he won't be able to last on this pitch too long at all. Headed out by Pallister, who's still struggling. Keen. <laughs> Gary Ablett. And he's found limp par. Jackson's made the run outside him. He spins by the deflection into the path of Ince. Now McClare. Excellent work by Leclerc, off goes Ince again. Now then for Hughes, he's got Irwin away to his left. Nicky Bart in the middle. Poor service though by Irwin. And some cool work from Gary Abbott to steer the ball back to his goalkeeper. And Steve Bruce is signalling to the bench there that he's really struggling and he needs the substitute to come on. He's given that rolling motion with his hands to say, look, change me, I just can't carry on. You see as he clears the ball there, he, he just pings the top of his hamstring there and I say they are such painful things that uh, it would be very very difficult to continue Kicks and four goals, the two substitutes the outfield substitutes for Manchester United so there may be some readjusting that needs to be done Roy Keane of course can always go into the back line there's Keane now snapping on the tackle and he's been penalised The signs are that it is a hamstring problem for Steve Bruce. He was saying beforehand he intends to make the most of today. Maybe my last final, says the 34 year old. Hitchcliffe. Pallister's header. This is Lippar now. And he's normally such an accurate passer of the ball, Lippar, that. When he commits that kind of error, it is a major surprise. Well, Steve Bruce is manfully and gamely battling on, but he wonder for how long. Well, certainly the Manchester United physio, he's trying to get on the field to him to actually assess how good or bad it is, but of course, if the, uh, with the new rules and regulations, unless Steve Bruce is prepared to walk off the field to him, then there's no way the physio is going to be able to come on to him. Steve Bruce, the first Englishman, of course, to lift the League and Cup double last season. Here's Bruce now. Doesn't appear to be in quite so much distress, so uh, hopefully it's not so serious as we might have thought it was. No, but I think the situation with it is that he, he had a chance then to play a longer ball forward and he was reluctant to do it. Out by Jackson. Yeah, that's a fair point, Ray. If it's going to restrict him, that will have to come into uh, Alex Ferguson's thinking. Still holding it somewhat gingerly. The problem leg. Irwin. Now Ince. This is Parkinson, though, on the break for Everton. Slow though, call it possession. It's starting it through, but up goes the linesman's flag over on the far side to deny Lee Sharp a path to goal. Well, with 25 minutes gone, no goals, and no substitution. But here, Steve Bruce is going to continue. Goals and Giggs back off the bench. Giggs himself, who of course, has been suffering from a hamstring injury.
Pallister as ever so strong at the back for United. This partnership with Bruce has been so formidable. He's looking for support from referee, but none is forthcoming. Spells of Giggs still limbering up. Well, Giggs has got his tracksuit bottoms off now as well, so there's another sign, I think, that it might not be long before he, he comes into the play. Limpar looking to stretch United now. It goes right out. That came off Pallister. But that whack clear by Dennis Irwin. Applet underneath it. McClare to Hughes. Shields it so well to bring others into the play. McClare. Hunsworth, though, has found Graham Stewart. Now Barry Horn. Hinchcliffe. Good combination here by Everton. Stewart's in the clear, in towards right out. And what a vital interception that was then by Dennis Irwin. Just got back in the nick of time. Really good defending by the Irish international. Everton's free kick. Ablett. Heinick Limpar. Everton will want to get him more into the game. Matt Jackson. His goal at the semi-final. Set Everton on their way. Just too long, though, for Barry Horn. Schmeichel setting United in motion now. This is McClare. Movement ahead of him from Hughes and from Butt. Now Neville joining them. It's... Is key for McClare. Measured approach played by United. But again, finding Everton's defence hard to pierce. Unsworth very strongly into the tackle. Likewise, Nicky Butt for United. He's not the biggest player in the world, Nicky Bott, but certainly he's not afraid to go in there and try and win his tackles. And that was a tremendous tackle on Unsworth there, because Unsworth's as big and strong as they come. I think they, his nickname in the Everton squad is Rhino, and you can understand why that's, that's called. Away by Ablett. Sent to Irwin. Bruce clearly is in some discomfort now. It goes Keen. Hughes has pulled into the centre. McClare as well. This is Butt. Faced but not fouled in the eyes of the referee by David Unsworth. Lip bar. Clearance and right out has failed to keep it in play. Either yeah. side quite producing the necessary cohesion so far. Just one or two half chances. A simple one that Lee Sharp had for Manchester United. Leclerc on for Keane. Hunt making the run ahead of him. Support on the right flank now then from Gary Neville. Keen again. Now Hughes. Here's Keen. McClare. Not by Sharp to Ince. But evidence defence standing firm. Now, can they launch the counter attack? Off goes Lippard. Stewart in motion, the space away to his left. This is Jackson. Right out in the middle. Still Jackson. And Stewart! Right up. Everton take the lead at the second attack for the end. Paul right up. Manchester United in disarray at the back. Caught there by the speed and the punch of the counter attack. Well, that was amazing, wasn't it? Because all of a sudden, United were outnumbered four to two and they just couldn't get the players. Look at the Everson players. There's four Everson players and only 
3 United. And really, Stewart should have scored with the first attempt here. It's laid across to him. He really has got to score with this. He hits it, but thankfully bounces out to Rydas, who makes no mistake whatsoever. But Alex Ferguson will be wondering how on earth could they break four against two to cause that sort of problem. Half an hour gone at the first blow, delivered by Everton, Paul Ryder. Keen, too long there in search of Lee Sharp. I just wonder there, and I'm sure Alex Ferguson is, how much Steve Bruce was labouring. He was back on the line and seemed almost motionless as Ryder headed in. Although well, the damage had already been done, of course. Well, I think the damage had already been done, they were just left. Pallister and Bruce were against four raiding United players and there was just, there was nothing that if Everson did it right, that the United defence could do about it. Colin Irwin tried to get back, he was the third one who got back, but where on earth the rest of the midfield were, I just do not know. But it was a speed and a thrust of the break which punished Manchester United. This will be the reaction of Joe Royal as the goal goes in. The first chance squandered by Stewart. You can see there a Willie Donachie's reaction. He thought the chance had gone. Stewart certainly should have scored. And all credit to Matt Jackson for his part in the build-up and his unselfish work too in laying the ball into the path of Grant Stewart. And it seemed he had to score from there. Well, he could, but full right out could. Right out, second goal in the FA Cup this season. He's the top scorer for Everton in the campaign. on his return to Wembley some 15 years after his last visit. Right out was here as a schoolboy international, got a hat-trick too for England. Well, he's returned here today in style. To the dismay of those following the team in red. He goes Stewart! And Schmeichel spread that huge frame of his and launched up a long arm to claim it. suddenly brought the game to life. Gary Ablett. Came to Ray at the end of a spell when you felt maybe United were getting on top. Well, certainly, yes. I mean, Everton weren't being opened up by United, but United had most of the possession, but now, all of a sudden, it's all Everton. Lippar. Threatening to unhinge them again. Up comes Schmeichel in such determined fashion. These wide open spaces should suit a player of his ability and does Lippard. Well, he has come into his own since Joe Royal arrived at Goodison Park. I think he's given him back his self belief again. He very much drifted into the shadows, really, at Goodison under Mike Walker at Lippard. Everton have pulled everybody back to defend the free kick, which Hintz is going to take. And maybe Irwin. Fair way up this one. Bruce making a run into the middle. That's where only as far as but. And he can't keep his shot down. Came in reflection. The referee says no goal kick. He certainly won't want to come off. United captain Steve Bruce. I thought he was labouring on the goal. Well, you know, he'll, he'll go through a brick wall with that red shirt on Steve Bruce, and he'll try and hang in there to half-time at least and see if something can be done about it and see if they can make a correct assessment on it. And one of the problems United have got is that, to be fair to Dave Watson and, and Unsworth at the back, they are commanding Mark Hughes, and therefore he's not getting hold of the ball to allow the midfield to get forward and support him, and that's a, and that's a big problem for him in the way the United team is set up at the moment. Ten minutes of the first half to go. Hinchcliffe. Right out. Looking to turn Bruce. Well, he was composed enough then. Neville. Up goes Mintz. Managed to withstand a battering hit from Parkinson. Position now goes United's way. And 
Keane's having a real go at Gary Neville there, and that's not the way in a cup final. A young lad in his first cup final, first full season, he needs encouragement in this situation. He doesn't need people like Roy Keane having a go at him. Neville, who's just been called into the latest England under-21 squad. Not with Nicky Butt. He is Butt now. McClare. Keane in support. Hughes, as ever, has shown for him. Now Keane. Wine of him is Neville. Just need to find a bit more width now, United. No way through, though, for Butt. And Havlett can play it away for Everton. Right up the goal scorer, Unsworth to Horn. Execution. Wonderful break then by Limpa. Well, Ince should know best than to dwell on the ball in the middle of the field there. And once him, Limpa robbed him there, he plays the perfect ball across. And Dennis Irwin does well to just get a little bit of pressure onto Graham Stewart, but really Stewart should have done better. That was a golden opportunity for him to go 2-0 up. Ince to Irwin. Everton looking so dangerous on the counter-attack. Now United have forced the corner. Bruce making his way forward. He won't fancy chasing back though. If this comes to nothing. Sharp with the corner. Hughes hovering at the far post. His chip towards Sharp. Jackson was there though. In goes Bruce. Looking to plough his way through. Up goes the flag. Offside, I think, against McClare, maybe through the middle. Well, he didn't show any signs of that hamstring there, did he, when he <laughs> foraging into the Everton penalty area? And Jackson who nicked it away. Horn into Ablett. And offside at the other end against Paul Rideout. Getting the vote today, Rideout ahead of not only Ferguson but also Abakachi, of course, the Nigerian international, who's one of the substitutes for Everton. This is Ince now. Typically powerful, forceful run, but he can't get past. Now laid off to Keane. to Butt. He's given it away though to Parkinson. Ablett to Hitchcliffe. Drilled on that for Rideout. Hitting well with Limpar. Oh, and such vision shown by the Swedish international to pick out Grant Stewart. There's more danger for United here. And away off Pallister for the corner. But again, such creative play by Anders Limpar. Yes, he's certainly having one of his good games so far today. Delightful ball to Stewart there, and Stewart really needs to be a bit more positive to really go at Pallister because he only had right out a hit at the far post, and it would have been a wonder ball to have reached him. I think he really had to try and go and score himself, himself there. Hitchcliffe will take the corner. Dave Watson in the middle. Right out on that near post too. Net power again, so instinctively out to Hitchcliffe again. Four waiting in the middle, this is Matt Jackson to drill it back in again. And Michael committed the other way. And we're on a corner. Five minutes of the first half to go. And Everton now pushing for a second goal. 
Wordsworth has stayed back, but Watson is up there. Applet too, who's also pretty useful in the air. And it's hard there for Peter Schmeichel to get a clear sight of that. It's a nightmare for a goalkeeper. There are so many bodies in there that for Schmeichel to try and get his fists or his hands onto the ball, so, so difficult. And Hinchcliffe, without a shadow of a doubt, is the best corner corner kick taker in the in the premiership without a shadow of a doubt they're coming with so much pace and so much accuracy it's a nightmare for defenders and particularly goalkeepers and he varies them too you're never quite sure if he's going near post or far post another dangerous ball hooked in Adlet I think on the end of that one well Hinchcliffe has so many bodies to hit see all the blue shirts that he can hit and this time it's certainly Ablett there with his head and it just nicks it over the top of the crossbar there but it's a, yet another chance from a corner kick Gary Ablett a winner of course with Liverpool in the FA Cup final back in 89 but in 88 beaten by Dave Bessett's Wimbledon now Bruce knocked off to Dennis Irwin There we get the Baffling qualities of Mark Hughes, but Baffling just a little too hard with his adversary, Dave Watson. Well, Dave Watson's been a tower of strength at the back there because if Hughes starts to get too much possession of the ball, he really will help to make United play, and Watson has been superb at the back there so far in this first half. So consistent too throughout the campaign, he only was, I think, four league games. Here he is now. An old teammate of Steve Bruce's, of course, from their Norwich City days. Here's Bruce now. Sharp. Couldn't turn Jackson, though. Lit par. He's got in the run through the middle of Stewart. Now as he got away from Neville and just managed to hook it away, then young Harry Neville. And maybe Schmeichel thought he hesitated too long, but an exchange of views between the two. I think Neville thought that Schmeichel was going to come for it, and Schmeichel wasn't, and Neville was left in a nearly an embarrassing situation. Hitchcliffe. Another fabulous tackle by Roy Keane. And it'll be a corner to Everton. Lippard wanting to take this one. Jackson on the near post, doesn't reach him though, but clear to head it out again. United certainly at full stretch in containing these corner kicks. Whether it be Hitchcliffe or now Lippar. Here's another variation, Lippar. Looking to expose Keane, not a bad cross in either. Parkinson laid back to Barry Horn. Surely asking too much, though, of Stewart, who gives up the chase. But we did wonder beforehand, Ray, if Everton might come here just to smother the game, but in fairness to them, they've created plenty of opportunities on the break. Well, they have, but they've created these opportunities by their battling qualities in the middle of the park. That's how they've won back possession of the, of the ball in the middle of the park there. They've, they've just given Manchester United no time whatsoever to play their fluid passing game, and... Uh, that's how they've been successful in the Premiership this year. You can see why, because they've got such hard work in midfield players that uh, nobody has a second on the ball in that middle of the field. There again, the tenacious Barry Horn. Then that ball, free kick to United. Elwin. Hughes, delicate little layoff that to it. And then by McClare, a goal win. The pockets have been tidy up. So much commitment from these Everton players. And they've more or less restricted United to just a couple of chances, really. Horn. 33 this week, Barry Horn. Another player who's prospered under the guidance of Joe Royal. That applies to so many of these Everton players. His arrival really has such a galvanising effect. Keane to Irwin. Now Pallister. 
McClare. Get over from Keane initially. Still McClare. Slipping it on then for Nicky Butts. Just a hit now that he was being held back. He kept going. Alex Ferguson off his seat on the bench, wondering there if that might have been a penalty. There's a superb ball from McClare there. And Ablett didn't see him coming. He maybe just pulls him a little bit right on the 18-yard line. But that was enough to put Nicky Butt off and, and to therefore knock the ball wide. Tremendous burst of acceleration, though, by Nicky Butt to take him clear. Outstanding anticipation by him to turn a good pass into a brilliant one, really. And very impressive in this first half, Nicky Butt, with his running, his enthusiasm. But overall, United just need that extra spark of imagination now. Can't help wondering if Eric Cantona might have given them that. Andy Cole, of course, also missing as he's cup tied. <laughs> the half time whistle to signal the end of a very satisfying 45 minutes for Joe Royal, who could certainly afford a wick and a smile. The goal on the half hour from Paul Rideout, dividing the two teams. And in fairness, Everton might have had a couple more too, certainly extending. United with their swiftness on the counter-attack and these menacing set pieces too that have caused United all kinds of problems. United themselves really just a couple of chances and they're finding Anders Limpart a real handful so far. So Ray Clements alongside me here your thoughts looking back on the first half. United certainly have had spells of dominance but without really turning that supremacy into an end product. Yes, I would think that Alice Ferguson has got far more to talk about in the dressing room than what Joe Royal has, because Joe Royal's team, team pattern has gone exactly as he wanted it. Uh, they've harried in the, in the middle of the field, they've got the ball forward to ride out and Stewart, and they've invited Manchester United to come at them and then hit them on the break, and that's how they've, they've got their opening goal, by just catching United with too many men forward, and then they're left with a, a four against two situation in Everton's favour. From United's point of view, they really do need to get more support from two Mark Hughes. They, he needs to get hold of the ball a lot better than he does. And they've got to try and get the ball into wider positions because if they keep playing in the middle of the field, that's where the strength of Everton is. And they're being out battled right in the centre of the field in the midfield areas. They need to get it out of there and try and stretch the Everton midfield and give themselves a chance of finding some space. Well, Bobby Chart, seeing his team playing a little bit below par, no question about that. Alex Ferguson was striding purposefully off towards the dressing rooms. The first thing he'll have to do, of course, is to assess the extent of Steve Bruce's injury and whether or not really to contemplate a substitution anyway, to perhaps, uh, to perhaps inject the pace of Ryan Giggs in the second half. That we'll have to see. The half-time score in the FA Cup final at Wembley is Everton 1, Manchester United 0. We'll be back shortly. Switch we thought might happen has indeed brought, been brought into effect. Ryan Giggs is on for the start of the second half for Manchester United. Steve Bruce, with what looked to be a hamstring problem, has not come out for the second period. Tremendous roar for the United fans. Sympathy, of course, for Steve Bruce, the captain. But Giggs, a man who on his day can be such a match winner, now has his chance in this second half. Keane has gone to right back, Neville into the centre of the back line. And Giggs will play up front. Alongside Mark Hughes. So United then starting the second half. Now kicking from left to right. Keane to Pallister. United haven't lost in an FA Cup final since way back in 1979 when Arsenal finally overcame them. But up against it here, against an Everton side playing with such determination in the first half. So much aggression and vigour. And stealth too on the counter-attack. 
Leading courtesy of Paul Rideout's goal on the half hour. Everton, who themselves have lost in their last three cup final appearances, 85, 86 and 89. This is Neville. The central defensive role then for him now. Alongside this man, Gary Pallister. Hughes. Played off to Irwin. Now here's Giggs, his first touch. And he's still tackling Bucksworth. In towards Box. Here's Nicky Box. Terrific block then by Neville South, who spread himself so well. But Everton also nearly then were found wanting at the back. Well, Ryan Giggs slipped David Unsworth there, and then Gary Ablett looks he's like he's going to clear. He slips, but luckily it just deflected off his knee, which just took it a little bit too far away from Nicky Butt to get a clean strike on target. Neville Southall, as you goalkeeper say, making himself look so big then. And he just got his hand to the corner from Lee Sharp. Pallister. Hot by Irwin. McClare's header. United starting the second half with great purpose. Irwin with the cross. And it's Ablett again. Always collapsing with his own goalkeeper. The evident goal under siege. So maybe the teacups have been flying around the dressing room at half time from Alex Ferguson. He won't have been too pleased with what he saw in that first 45 minutes. Jackson's header away. Limpar. It was a constant source of irritation to United in the first 45 minutes. Now, I think United in the first half, as, as hard as Everton worked, United looked a little bit like a side who had just lost the league championship and took, a little, and took some picking up, but it certainly looks as Alex Ferguson has got stuck into him at half-time, and Ryan Giggs has shown in this opening couple of minutes more strength and purpose and positiveness than they showed in the all of the first half. Graham Stewart. Neville is there with him. Long way to go yet, Alex. Ablett. Worked back though by Gary Pallister to Peter Schmeichel. Steve Bruce now down there on the bench. Looking very disconsolate as he was being interviewed in the tunnel when the other United players came out for the second half. Such an inspiration he's been, of course, to United. Right out. And no joy this time for Graham Stewart. Might be a problem there for Paul right out. Back on his feet. They're not looking too comfortable. Irwin. Just managing to slide it back as Lippard came into the tackle. Abbott with a header, finding Hitchcliffe. Now Neville. Irwin's long pass. Hughes was after it. That's worth it quickly. Really do need to keep their concentration at the back, Everton. The likes of Giggs now are out to torment them. Here's Giggs now. Hasn't played for five weeks because of that hamstring injury. And he'd been doubtful really right up until the last couple of days when Alex Ferguson decided he would be fit enough to play some part in the game today. Sharp. But they work his way past Matt Jackson. His chances have been limited at the Everton team, although he's played in all the cup ties since the arrival of Earl Barrett from Aston Villa. He, of course, is cup tied, so Jackson keeping his place for the final. Back by McClare to Irwin. Parkinson's clearance. One of the unsung heroes, really, Parkinson in this Everton side. In his younger days, he might have 
And the poor rider out to me looks to be struggling up, up, up the centre of the pitch there. He's just had a little word with the bench, and uh, there you can see some movement over on that far bench there that uh, Ferguson is getting his, his tracksuit off. We might be seeing introduction of him any time now. I would think so. Right out's come back now to defend this corner. Take a fatigue and hitting it wide. But I don't think Paul Rideout is going to continue for much longer. Ferguson getting ready. Just listen to the roar from the Everton fans. He's become an idol in his relatively short time at the Goodison Park. And Brady Frank, of course, for Paul Rideout. His goal still separates the two teams. Last-minute instructions from Joe Royal. And out comes the controversial six-foot-three-inch Duncan Ferguson. Well, it'll be very important that Gary Parsons tries to look after Ferguson all the time because young Gary Neville will find it a massive handful if Ferguson gets himself up against him. First ball back to Pallister. Stewart now. His aerial threat is so strong, Duncan Ferguson. Got a good first touch as well. And he's a handful for any defender. Well, there's right out in some distress. Unable to savour his moment any longer, having scored in an FA Cup final at Wembley. He's now out of the action. Can his team hold on? Roy Keane. On for Leclerc. Ferguson has scored eight times in his... Spell with Everton, it's coming of course from Glasgow Rangers, initially on loan, and then a four million pound signing. Off Answorth, falls for Giggs. And they'll be disappointed. Well, that was a chance, that certainly was a chance, it's knocked down to him there, and it really, as the ball drops, he's got to get his body over the top of that, he's leaning right back, and there's only one result with that, isn't there? But uh, that really is the first shooting opportunity. The statistics at half time are interesting that, that Everson had had four shots on target, and that up to, uh, to half time, Manchester United haven't had one shot on target. Ferguson beaten in the air again by Pallister. Unsworth. Casually back to Neville Southall. Well, let's get the early thoughts in the second half from Dave Bessett. Dave, what have you made of it so far? Yeah, well, I, I think you've already seen immediate response uh, from the Man United team, from Alex Ferguson's team too. Um, definitely looking more positive. And I think with the uh, introduction of Ryan Giggs, his first touch was a, a, a very good cross, which um, nearly resulted in a goal. OK, Dave, we'll hear from you a little later on. Sharp. No real depth though on the cross. Leclerc then helping it on to Roy Keane. Hitchcliffe covering. And that'll be a corner. Well, the linesman was right on the spot. Keane was sharp. Up goes Ince. Can't reach it though, thanks to Parkinson's efforts. And it'll be a free kick anyway to Everton. Did so well to turn things around, of course, after their traumatic start to the season. I wonder what His Royal Highness is making of the game today. Martin Edwards sitting alongside him, the chairman of Manchester United. An aerial duel extraordinaire developing now between these two, Pallister and Ferguson. Sharp to Irwin. Hughes making tracks down the middle. Good anticipation then by the Welshman. Also by Answorth holding him off. Clattering of bodies. It's out of play. It's a goal kick. Answorth under real pressure then from Mark Hughes. Well, that's a real battle of strength there. Look at those two pulling and pushing at each other there. And when we say about Pallister and Ferguson at one end of the field, but Hughes and Unsworth have had a real battle as, long, as well as David Watson has. 
Mark Hughes is the only survivor in this Manchester United team from the 85 final. Barry Horn. This is Ablett. Flicked on by Ferguson. But not on the same wavelength that time as Graham Stewart. Ferguson, whose goal beat Manchester United in the recent league game. Up at Goodison Park. Hitchcliffe. Not too casual that though, now a butt's been caught by Barry Horn. Such an effervescent player, Nicky Butt. It's a touch of inspiration though that United are seeking now as they endeavour to haul themselves back into this cup final. Keane and Giggs organising the free kick taken by Giggs. At least it will be eventually. Here's Keane. The market was a bit casual then, Nicky Butts. But striking it way, way over the bar. To the obvious dismay of Alex Ferguson, who I'm sure won't allow his emotions to get the better of him at this stage. Well, at least United now are getting around the Everton box and getting one or two shooting opportunities, whereas in the first half they weren't even being able to do that. Yes, statistics show just two shots off target from United in that first period. Good chasing and harrying again from Graham Stewart. Well, Cantona in the background there. He could certainly have done with his magical skills this afternoon in Manchester United. Hints. And for Devil, it's Hughes. Is ever working so hard? Sharp with the cross, in goes Giggs. A collision and a free kick to Everton. No real protest as the referee sprints away. And Everton trying to watch the break. Down goes Stewart. Fouled by Neville. Pallister has the height of Ferguson to contend with, and Neville the pace of Graham Stewart. Stewart, who was man of the match in the semi final against Tottenham. Now it's United's free kick. Ferguson, who's such a volatile character, and of course, later next week he comes up in court again to discover what punishment he's going to get after assaulting a fellow player in a Scottish game. Roy Keane. This is Neville now. Wide of him is Irwin. United trying to string their passes together. Giggs can get nowhere though. Away by Watson. Ferguson was the target and passed to it first. And that's Stuart holding on four hits. to find some momentum in the second half. And some sharpness too in front of goal. Their fans doing their best to lift them. Irwin spotting a run of gigs. So too the Neville Sample, who came out in very aggressive fashion. The referee though saw nothing wrong. Irwin hits to McClure. And Keane here. United for the moment capped in the Everton half. Look there at the determination of Parkinson. He just won't let Keane get away from him. And that really, really epitomizes the way Everton have set about this game today. Yes, they've all got jobs to do and they're sticking to them. They're just not say, as in the first half, giving United no time whatsoever on the ball. And United had a little spell like this in the first half, but Everton saw it through and finished up going in front. And they've got to see this pressure through again now. Kick swapping passes with Butt. Huntsworth just stretching out a leg there. Horn to Hitchcliffe. And here's the danger to United. If Everton can sprint quickly forward. Graham Stewart in for Ferguson. Good touch. Horn inside. And the pass was casual. Now, what can United do here? Sharp almost releasing Mark Hughes. But it's lip par for Everton. As players begin to tie up, more space may well become available. Irwin to McClare. Potted on for Nicky Butt. 
Rather optimistic pass though by Paul Entz. Now he'll challenge with Ferguson. Hughes down to Giggs. Still Ryan Giggs. Just too many defenders though for him in the end. By his own high standards, it hasn't been a great season for Ryan Giggs, but with injuries and other problems. Hitchcliffe. Steer it back into the path of Stewart in the middle. And Gary Neville most relieved to see that one go from his point of view, the right side of the post. Pallister. Now win. United have got to raise their game now. Or well, they're going to go home empty-handed from the season. Irwin. Now sharp. Good block though by Dave Watson, who once again has been a tower of strength at the back for Everton this afternoon. Ferguson taking on Neville. Stewart in support. Hitchcliffe arriving on this near side. Still Stewart. Drill back then for Ablett. Horn. Ablett again. Movement ahead of him from Stewart. Hitchcliffe. He's done well here. Ferguson's at the far post. Schmeichel at full stretch, just managing to beat it away. Irwin's clearance. Horn to hook it back again. Now Paul Itz. No let up in the pace. But United need to find some more punch when they attack. Here's Bunt. Giggs whipping over the cross towards McClare. That shot couldn't get his foot to it. United half-heartedly appealing for a penalty. No question of getting one, though. But something will let off then for Everton. Roy Keane. Pallister. Hintz let it run through. And Hughes not in tandem with Ryan Giggs. Well, it's a great ball in by Giggs here, and Brian McClare is inches away from it. And there really is a miscontrol by, by Lee Sharp. He really had to do better. He was caught unawares when it came past the two of them. And before he could react quick enough, the, the chance and the opportunity had gone. Still lacking that chilling finish in front of goal. Hughes couldn't though get the better of Dave Watson. Horn on for Stewart. Ferguson's unmarked in the middle. Here is Ferguson now. Away from Keane. Barry Horn. Ferguson. Oh, Irwin. Such a risky pass, in goes Parkinson. What on earth was Dennis Irwin thinking of there? Well, I think the idea was to knock it down to Paul Ince, but it was a terrible header, and Joe Parkinson, he, he came rushing onto it, and just a, a little better touch, he would have really had a goal-scoring opportunity. Dennis Irwin, normally a man you can 
always rely on. Alex Ferguson indeed says he's the one man on the side he never considers selling. Such has been his consistency. Hughes. <laughs> 65 minutes gone. Still Everton leading by a goal to nil. Keane. Path claiming there that his path was blocked. Ferguson trying to hold off Pallister. Big smile then from Ferguson. Relishing his part in the action now. I mean, come on as a substitute in the second half. It's been a powerful display by Everton, and they still have the edge. Hughes. Parkinson, though, again, sticking to his task so well. Limpard. Well, cheekily through to Horn. Limpard again taking over. Just whipped away to this near side to Hitchcock. Such elegant work from Anders Limpard. Joe Royal has been saying he has so much ability, and he has been showing it too in the last few weeks. Here's Hitchcliffe now, closed down by Keane. And then for Ablett. No one on the end of the cross. Well, this shows the confidence that's oozing through the Everton side at the moment because we've talked about them getting the ball from the back to the front all the game. And now they're confident enough there. They must have strung six or eight passes to go there before the ball actually finished up going into the box from Gary Ablett. But, uh, They've, they've took on that pressure that United put onto them and now they're starting to play again themselves. Certainly a much different story to last year when United, of course, outclassed Chelsea. Comprehensive winners by four goals to nil. But they have won the match this afternoon in Everton. It's knocked on then for Giggs. He's got support in the middle, still Giggs. Lovely play off Watson. And there's McClure! With Southall struggling to get back. Ryan McClare so close. Well, that's a wonderful piece of trickery over the far side. There we see Giggs going around, delightful ball in. And Southall really, he might have just got the slightest of touches to that. But Parkinson, who's been outstanding all the game, managed to get his head on and clear that ball. Such catalyzing play then by Ryan Giggs. Teasing Everton. The way they didn't really do in the first half. Now Amokachi is going to come on, which I'm sure will delight all our viewers back in his home, Nigeria. <laughs> going off. And Daniel Amokachi, the hero of the semi final with his two goals against Tottenham, comes on again. Those two goals coming, of course, as a substitute. Whether Joe Royal felt maybe Anders Limpa had run out of steam, I don't know. Here's Giggs with the corner. Vicky Butt. And Bocacci will certainly provide another dimension for United to deal with. With his strength. And his hard running. Lee Sharp. Now Pallister, a lot of adjusting for position going on ahead of him. Here's Dennis Irwin. Now Gary Neville. Roy Keane for Butt. Leclerc. Butt again, Pallister. Everton being pegged back here in their own half. Gary Neville. 20 minutes to go, and still Everton with a so slender lead. Irwin. Sharp has pulled out wide. So there's no way through, and it will be a free kick to Everton. Lee 
Sharp, who hasn't been as influential in this game as certainly he was hoping. And really, most of the chances have fallen to Lee Sharp. Remember, a header in the first half, he had a left foot shot in the first half, and he's just miscontrolled an opportunity when Ryan Griggs created one with a, uh, a very good cross ball from the left hand side. Ferguson and his assistant Brian Kidd in earnest consultation together, wondering how they can turn this final around. Still have Paul Scholes as an option, and maybe they're going to take that option. Ferguson to Parkinson, who, as Ray was saying earlier, has been outstanding in midfield with his drive and his enthusiasm. Brian McClare to Ince. And it's really the presence of Horn and of Parkinson that's quelled the part that Ince has played. He rather took over the final last year, Paul Ince, but that certainly hasn't been the case today, thanks to the endeavours of those two at the heart of the midfield for Everton. Horn and Parkinson. But United have the corner now, McClare. Sharp. Oh. It whistled across the face of the goal. Maybe some way wide in the end. We'll see perhaps more for the replay. As it was a well-worked corner kick over the far side, and uh, you know, it was one of those situations where I think that... Uh, it looked closer than it was, but it doesn't surprise me that uh, now Lee Sharp is being taken so and that four scores is coming on. Lee Sharp will be disappointed with his performance today, really. Uh, he really hasn't shown any of the, the skills and the endeavour that we know he's got. But uh, Scholes will come in now and go up the front, and Ryan Giggs will now come out onto his favourite left-hand side. Scholes, another of the former trainees, who's come up so well through the ranks at Old Trafford, just 20 years old, Paul Scholes. Seven goals for United during the campaign. That's a really good prospect. Here's Butt. Hitchcliffe with the back pass. Thumped away by Neville Southall. Butt with an injury. Throw the dice set to send up Paul Scholes by Alex Ferguson. The time just beginning to run out. Well, let's hope that uh, Nicky Butt's injury isn't a serious one because uh, that's the last thing Alex Ferguson will want. He's just brought on his second substitute, and now immediately Nicky Butt goes down injured. And he, the last thing he needs is to go down to 10 men now. I remember the semi final when Paul Rideout changed his mind and didn't want to go off for Everton, but Amakachi was already on and nothing was going to stop him. And Joe Royal probably claimed it was a good decision after because he scored twice. Well, he's a man who can influence this now, Ryan Giggs, with his pace and his finishing. But seems to be OK, he'll run it off, I think. Neville, wide to Irwin. This is Entz. Irwin for McClare. Certainly haven't had that cutting edge that they need this afternoon at Manchester United so far, anyway. And we'll catch you. Ferguson. Right to Adlet. That clip is there with him. Now Abukachi. Good turn. And he clearly didn't pull back from that tackle. Well, he's very, very powerful, isn't he? And he's got a, a, a smashing touch as well for such a big, big fellow. But he's really found it difficult in the Premiership this year. But uh, these conditions, perfect playing surface. Nice day, the sun's shining, he might actually like it today. Here's Ryan Dix. Chance of getting there before Dave Watson. Ferguson. Only Abukachi in the middle. This is Hitchcliffe. 
Played back by Ferguson to Ablett. All given away then by Nicky Butt. Ablett to Hitchcliffe. Two in the middle now. Stewart and Abokachi. Barry Horn. Still rather laboured. Then it goes Ferguson. That was a real chance for Peter Schmeichel. For all his strength and height. It's quite a sight to have coming at you, Duncan Ferguson. Yes, he's got Schmeichel's got to keep his eye on the ball here. He takes his eye off it, and it's going to be Ferguson's favourite to get it. But uh, quite a fair challenge there. One you've got to accept as a goalkeeper. He was brave and committed, Duncan Ferguson. It's very sad that he had just taken his eye off that one, and Schmeichel it could so easily have been another goal. Ryan Giggs running at defenders, hoping to expose them. And he scores! Brilliant work by the goalkeeper, and the veteran without question that saved his team. Never now to fire through his goals was on his way back. The flag stayed down, but it's come to nothing. But what a moment then from Neville Southall. Well, here it is now. It's Ryan Giggs running positively through. Scholes must think this is his magic moment. That's a tremendous save. Unfortunately, Scholes with a second one, a little bit unbalanced and couldn't lift it over him, but just watch how Neville Southall stays on his feet, doesn't commit himself, then makes the block, and now it looks as though he's going to lift it over him, and he just can't do the skill correctly, but full credit to Neville Southall, but they showed all his experience there. Uh, Eric Cantona, and there's the ten minutes down on the bench, they can't believe it, but Southall pulled off a double save. Now, X has been penalised. Scholes, he's only just come on as a substitute. Almost found glory there. All about timing from South, on knowing when to save, I mean, when to commit yourself. And he just stood up there, waited his moment, and pulled off that breathtaking double stop. Now, here's Hitchcliffe. It's within range. <laughs> But he will have to do a lot better than that to trouble Peter Schmeichel in any way. He was closer to him in the range of the crowd than he was in, yeah. <laughs> in the goal having on that attempt. And I was reading somewhere he's been either involved in or has scored 18 goals this season with that left foot of his, and those dangerous crosses that he supplies, and he's shooting too. Ryan Giggs, superbly fouled by Hughes. Away though by Stewart to Abakachi. Neville have gone out there with him. Some glum faces among the United faithful. Well, we want to see of him stood in and sat in that crowd now thinking, well, we've had a marvellous season and we're going to finish up with nothing. And uh, there's still plenty of time left, really, but for, when you're sat in the crowd watching it, time seems to flash past. Irwin. Give it away, though, to Jackson. Off goes Abakachi. Well, it's out of play. He was unlucky then, the Nigeria. Have a catch who certainly had his ups and downs at Goodison Park. Lost his way for a while, and then came back with a vengeance towards the end of the season. Certainly in that semi final, when Joe Royal was so ecstatic with his double success. They played really well that afternoon to overcome Tottenham, and they've done it again today against Manchester United. Amokachi. Referee waving play on. Nothing wrong with the tackle. Keane. Hughes controlled it so deftly. And then spread out to Irwin. Giggs. Giggs again. And Jackson's tackle. Michael to Neville. Pallister. Everton prepared to soak up the pressure and hope to launch the on attack of their own. As they defend this one goal lead. Ryan Giggs now. McClare's in the middle and it's McClare. 
still they can't force it through. Staple to clear at the end. Some pretty desperate defending then by Everton. Leclerc who couldn't finish it off. Scholes to Roy Keane. Scholes again. Congested penalty area. And the header. Southall brings on to it. Well, it was just the right height for a goalkeeper of Neville's class to make the best of that, but it's a good header up there from Palace, but Neville's always in control of the situation there. I say, somebody of his ability, he would probably class that as a simple save, although I'm sure all the Evertonians thought that was a magnificent save. Keane, just managing to steer it back to Peter Schmeichel. He has made a great deal to do all of the side-back, certainly. Most of the attacking has come from Manchester United. Off goes Hughes. Abbott is there with him. And that'll be a goal kick. No question, Neville Southall is the hero now for Everton. Amazing to think early in the season he was receiving hate mail from some of the Everton fans after he'd fallen out with them. They don't hate him now, they love him. And quite rightly so. I say the first save was magnificent. That one was a good save and uh, an important one. That's the most important thing because certainly Man United are back in the ascendancy at the moment. And I'm just a little bit worried that Everton are sitting back there and saying, OK, we've got the goal, you're not going to score against us. And United have got too many players who have got the ability who could just turn on one bit of magic and it'll be one all. They are rather inviting United to come at them. Parkinson's header, puck four then by Neville, Scholes is after it, who's there? Neville Southall. Nice one, Neville. Abakachi and Ferguson. Shot stick back though by Gary Neville. Watson put his head to that one, Scholes with one's word. That cut then by Gary Abbott. Happy to clear anyway. Nicky Bart and McClare. You certainly never write off Manchester United, such are their fighting qualities. Remember Oldham in the semi-final last season when Hughes saved them with that dramatic goal. And Joe Royal won't need reminding of that. Hitchcliffe. Ferguson with Pallister. And he slipped. Ferguson's away. And Makachi in the middle and Horn. Keen to the rescue. Now Gary Pallister. So relieved there to see that chance go begging. Ferguson. Keen being hounded by Abokachi. But United's goal kick. They're looking very anxious now, all around the stadium. Those who follow Manchester United. A gripping finale and prospect. Paul Ince driving United on. Nicky Butt. Now Ince. Giggs. Didn't make a decisive contact though. Bobby Charlton wondering if his team can find an equaliser. Block throw by Neville. It was a prodigious one too. Amokachi on the break. Five minutes to go, Barry Horn. The red tackle, the first yellow card of the game for Gary Neville. Certainly went in there very abrasively, and no hesitation from referee Gerald Ashby. 
No, Barry Horn here, he can just see him coming, tries to turn it, in fact does turn the ball very well, and Neville takes his legs away, and quite rightly, he can have no qualms about that. He's had a lot of bookings this year, as we know, Gary Neville, in fact, nearly missed the final through the number of bookings he's had. Ferguson, tangling with Pallister. Off Antwerp, it falls for Ince, Dunford scores, it's very happy at the challenge for Horn. Another yellow card, this time for Barry Horn. He's the culprit, having been the aggrieved party a minute or so ago. Come the cautions in the space of a minute. Scholes to Neville. Everton have everybody back. Matt Jackson. There's no one in the United half with a blue shirt on. Now there is Abokachi. Everton edging their way towards victory. What an end that would be to their season. But it's not over yet. Away by Dave Watson. Well, they are desperate now, United. They've shoved Pallister right up the front there and just left Roy Keane at the back with Gary Neville. They're really now in a desperate situation to get this equaliser. But Hughes, the time is there. Ablett. Now Roy Keane. But bit casual though. It goes Hall. So tigerish in the tackle. There are three minutes remaining. Blitz clearance. And it on by Ferguson to Abakachi. Keaton, though, just doing it up. Right up is his goal. Going to win this cup final. Away by Watson. Top it on, but surely by Hitchcliffe. Don't really see why the Everton players are protesting. Schmeichel is going up for the kick. The Manchester United goalkeeper. Well, he's done it before. <laughs> what happens at Everton break? We'll wait to see. Kicks floating over. Schmeichel almost got on the end of it too. Fight through then by Irwin. The man who saw me uh, normally so lethal, normally so deadly, hits it harmlessly and tamely wide. Yes, it really was a tame shot in the end, but uh, obviously we talked about Pallister going up, and now Schmeichel going up, and that's what Irwin did there, was just what Everton wanted. Put the ball behind the goal, let's take 30 seconds, 45 seconds to get this ball back in play, and we'll just see out time. Such tension now at Wembley. Ferguson with the header. We're into time headed on for stoppages. Coming up by Antwerp. Pass to again. Vicky Bunch for Hughes. Will there be a twist in the tail? It's all about defending now for Joe Royal's team. King. Good corruption tackle again by Horn. That's a foul on Gary Neville. Schmeichel's on his way forward again. Or is he going to take the kick? <laughs> well, he's certainly taken control of the situation. Not a bad ball either. If Palace can get on the end of it, Hughes just couldn't turn in time. Well, that would have been some story then. Schmeichel planting a perfect cross. Neville with another of those long throws towards Pallister. Graham Stewart. Hacked away by Jackson. Schmeichel on the halfway line. Keane now to Irwin. Chip through. Oh, Neville Southall. Holding on to the relief of the Evertonians. He came with purpose and he collected. 
Well, that was exactly what the Everton defence needed. Neville being big, strong, only got one hand to it, but one hand was enough to pull it down into his chest and take control of it. Off the head of Irwin. Giggs is after it. Deep into injury time. Hughes in the middle, still Giggs. And that's off Barry Horn for the corner. Well, Barry oh. Horn and Joe Clark Parkinson, I, I can't believe the amount of work they've got through. They have worked so, so hard for this side. It's incredible. Giggs taking the kick. Schmeichel can't reach it. And we'll catch you on the break. There's no one in goal for United. What will he do here? Schmeichel's not even trying to get back. Amokachi still. Has he got away from McClare? No. Well, Schmeichel is still upfield. Someone will have to go in goal. Oh, it's, too it's all over. Everton have won the FA Cup. Dave Watson, the captain, who has inspired his team to victory. Manchester United, the favourites, have been beaten by the underdogs. Manchester United, for whom the season had promised so much, well, it's now ended in bitter disappointment. The campaign without a trophy. Everton, bottom of the Premier League, back in the early part of the season, seemingly on their way down. Well, they've survived relegation, and now they've gone on to win the FA Cup. And Ray Clements alongside me here, you have to admire their resilience, their resourcefulness on the day. Well, I say, Joe Royal's game plan was set out and it worked exactly as he wanted it to, and you've got to give Joe Royal and the Everton players full credit for that. You now, you look at the Everton side and each and every one of them made a contribution to it. You know, Neville Southall, two magnificent saves in the second half. Dave Watson and David Onsworth, how they controlled Mark Hughes throughout the game was magnificent. And for me, Barry Horn and Joe Parkinson, as I mentioned literally seconds ago, I've never seen two players work so hard in the middle of the field. They shut Manchester United's creative midfield right out of the game. And therefore, United, no way could they create the opportunities they wanted to. I mean, apart from those two magnificent saves from Neville Southall, United, with all the talent they've got in the side, didn't create more than four or five chances in the whole game. All around the stadium, the mixed emotions that sum up what this great day means to the fans here at Wembley. Those in blue celebrating now. And those who follow the team in red will take some consoling. Peter Schmeichel, who did his best at the end there to find a goal, racing forward himself. Steve Bruce didn't come out for the second half because of injury. You wonder now how big a part that played, certainly on the goal when he did appear to be struggling. And for Alex Ferguson, well, the season has ended in dismay. Club faces among those United players that didn't feature Andy Cole, Eric Cantona. Everton have sprung the big surprise. Well, the goal that settled it came, of course, on 30 minutes. Scored by Paul Rideout himself having to go off later through injury. But here it is again then, right? The goal that won the cup final. Well, it's a, Matt Jackson does so well there, pulls it onto his left foot there, and it, to all intents and purposes, he's going to hit it. And then he picks out Graham Stewart, and Graham Stewart must think it's his birthday there, thinks he's going to score, somehow misses it, and then Paul Rideout bails him out of jail here with a perfectly placed header, giving Stewart... Steve Bruce, no opportunity whatsoever on the, end of the, on the goal line to save it. But Graham Stewart will see this a few times, and he really think each time how much easier it was for him to score than hit the bar from there. Did so well then, Matt Jackson, so unselfishly laying it back into the path of Stewart, and there's a clinical finish from Paul Ryder. <laughs> I think Steve Bruce can do that. Stranded on the goal line. Well, United had opportunities. The dancing Ryan Giggs here. Yes, this is the magnificent save, I think it's uh, 
coming up soon. This is the oh, this when they hit the crossbar with uh, Brian McClare with Neville Southall really struggling, and he, I'm not sure whether he got a touch there or not, but he had the he had the space covered there. I don't think there's any way it could have dropped in the net because he got his hand up level with the crossbar. Only he will tell us at the press conference after whether he actually touched that onto the crossbar or not. Well, Manchester United were hoping to be the first team since Tottenham back in 1982 to retain the FA Cup, only the fourth this century, but it hasn't turned out that way. Losers this afternoon by a single goal. Mark Hughes, who might well have joined Everton earlier in the season, certainly did his utmost today to turn things around, but it wasn't to be. Brian McClare, so unlucky with that header. Ryan Giggs on in the second half as a substitute. But nothing United could try to change the course of the FA Cup final. And for Alex Ferguson, it's a season without a trophy. And who would have thought that when the campaign got underway back in August? So now the Everton players making their triumphant way up the steps to receive the FA Cup. Dave Watson. Grand old campaigner, 33 years old now. And winners came to Everton in the late 70s from Norwich, having started his career, of course, with Liverpool. Played in the 89 final against Liverpool for Everton, but this time he's a winner. Shaking hands with his Royal Highness. Everton's day. A very suntan Prince Charles alongside of there, Graham Kelly. And there's the man of the match, the man of the moment, Neville Southall, with that incredible double save that proved so vital in the end, keeping up young Paul Scholes. We may certainly have not seen the last of Neville Southall, even at the age of 36. He remains on the top of his game. And his limp pass so lively early on. Hansworth really strong on the back alongside Watson. Grant Stewart running so hard. And Paul Rideout, whose goal settled it all. Duncan Ferguson, who must have thought earlier in the week he may not have played any part at all because of his recent injury. Gary Ablett, who has experienced both sides of the coin then with victories and a defeat back in 88. And Joe Royal, the man who's made it all possible. I think he might just be in for good reception back on Merseyside when the team return home. It's been such a transformation, Ray, in Everton this season. Yes, you had to hold your hands up to what Joe Royal has done because there's not been many changes apart from Duncan Ferguson coming to the club and he obviously has uh, had a massive influence on them. But having said that, they played for half the game without him. They got in front without him today. It's just Joe Royal has developed that self-belief in the side. He's got, the, he's got the passion going. He's got the fans going with them now. And it really is a tremendous performance for them to finish up winning the cup from where they were just before Christmas, you could never ever envisage they'd finish up being in the FA Cup final, never mind winning it. Yes, bottom of the Premier League so early on, they'd won only once under Mike Walker, but ten victories under Joe Royal for the rest of the season, so they eventually finished 15th in the Premier League to ensure their survival for another season. And this is capped it all now, winning the FA Cup. Their fifth success in 12 finals. Won by the goal from Paul Ryder. And there the distressed figure of Steve Bruce. Wondering if this was going to be his last cup final. Let's hope it isn't. He has been such a grand servant, not only to Manchester United, but to the English game in general. But these are the pictures now you'll see on your newspapers. The happy, smiling faces of Everton. And there the... Grim expression on the face of Alex Ferguson, who will find this very, very hard to take. The 1995 FA Cup final at Wembley has been won by Everton from Ray Clements and myself, Peter Brackley. A very good afternoon to you.